The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors. Jason's Deli Real Food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli locations. Also, the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. So while the basketball season is in mid-stride, we look back on the fall sports seasons. In this segment, we look back on the soccer season that features our two-time national championship women's soccer team. For the eighth year in a row, our Roadrunners won the regular season championship, cakewalking through the conference schedule with an unblemished 16-0 record. They look to repeat as conference tournament champions, but fell short, losing to Fort Lewis in penalty kicks in the finale. It was a 1-1 game heading into OT, but the Skyhawks dominated the penalty kicks with a score of 4-1. Metro still earned a number one seed in the NCAA tournament and faced off against Northern Sun Conference's Minnesota Duluth on a very snowy day in which the field had to be plowed for action to take place. This game features all our Mac forward Becca Mays taking on the Northern Sun's Defensive Player of the Year and goalkeeper Hannah Bankston. First half, Mays with the early chance, but Bankston there to thwart away the shot. Deleuze Claire Damon sends a shot in past Metro's Beck of Maloney, but the ball just misses wide right of the post. The game remains scoreless after 45 minutes of play. Metro has a great chance in the second half when Mays puts a header on net, but Bankston gets a hand on it. It hits the post, but gets kicked away by the Bulldog defense. In the 77th minute, Duluth with the free kick. It hits post, and Maria Leiter taps in the rebound for the goal. Or is it? The referee says the Bulldogs were offside, so no goal. And Coach Kane is livid at the call. But the score remains 0-0. With five minutes left in the game, the ball bounces its way in front of Mays, who goes left past Bengston for the 1-0 lead. It's Mays' 22nd goal on the year. The game looks in hand for the runners, but 55 seconds later, Lauren Graydon sends this shot in just under the crossbar to tie the game at one. What an incredible turn of events for both of these teams as we head into overtime for some free soccer. So who do you go when you need a big goal? How about the senior Mays who crosses in front of the net and taps it under Bankston for the golden goal? Metro moves on to the third round of the NCAA tournament. Head coach Adrian Almarez explains that the ball sometimes just bounces your way. I mean, for us, it, it was a, lucky, a little bit of a lucky break, you know, because 1-0, who knows what could have happened. And when we, we went up, um, obviously you want to try to protect that lead. It's five minutes in the game, but at the end of the day, it's the NCAA tournament and anything can happen. The Roadrunners head into the round of 16 to take on a familiar rival, but they come up on the short end of that game, falling to the School of Mines 4-3 in PKs. Neither team could find the back of the net during regulation, and it was the second loss in two weeks for Metro, losing to Fort Lewis, also in penalty kicks. The men's football team finished the year third place in the RMAC standings behind Fort Lewis and Colorado Mines. That earned them a trip to the conference tournament, but not necessarily the NCAA tournament, as only the top two teams in the region get those spots. So Metro needed a W in the worst way against 11th ranked Colorado Mines in the regular season finale. Both teams battling for that final spot in the regional tournament. One minute in, senior Sam Rolfe slips one past Mineskeeper Manville Strand for his first goal of the year. 1-0 Metro lead. This time Scott Grody with that same chance, but misses just wide of the net. Metro's keeper Dominic Griffith is standing strong in the first half. He dives on it before a shot could take place. Then a free kick chance for the ore diggers. The ball bounces around and then it goes over the crossbar. Runners keep that 1-0 lead heading into the half. But Mines finally punches one through. Alex Gunberg takes the nice feed from Chike Sullivan. The game is all tied up. Metro has a great chance on a set piece that Strand cannot initially handle. Stephen Emery with the rebound, but Strand regains his composure and keeps the game tied. Sullivan with the nice moves, puts the shot on net, but Griffith is there to wrap it up. Overtime loomed for this game, but with 22 seconds left, Alex Nass puts a head on the ball that gets past Griffith, and Mines takes the victory by a score of 2-1. to one. <laughs> Well, tough loss, coach, at the very last seconds. It seemed like it was kind of a, a tale of two halves. You guys kind of ruled the first half. What did, what did minds change the second half to really uh, get their offensive game going? Well, I don't know if it was so much uh, what they did. Um, I think they did a much better job in the second half of possessing the ball and just keeping it, and we just went the exact opposite. And I thought we did a real good job in the first half of uh, keeping the ball and just, uh, you know, kind of find, probing them for opportunities. Um, you know, I thought we had uh, three real good opportunities. Obviously, one we scored on, uh, one we missed wide, and then one that we hit the post. Um, you know, and I think mine's, you know, mine's is too good of a team to, you know, you, you know one goal is not going to be enough. 
So the loss ends any hopes of a ticket to the big dance, but the men's soccer team did play well in the RMAC tournament. They defeated the same Ordager team in the first round in PKs, but then fell to the eventual national champion Fort Lewis 3-1 in the tournament final. Coming up in our next segment, we have some running to catch up on. And don't forget to check out GoMetroState.com to weigh in on our fan poll. If your selection wins the poll, you have a chance at winning a great Metro State prize pack. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us on the Road Run Review. And if you want to catch any of these highlights that you see from the show, just visit GoMetroState.com to check them out. Our Roadrunners finished off a strong cross-country schedule this year, finishing third in the University of Colorado Springs Rust Buster. The men's team finished third in the Colorado State Classic. And at the University of Colorado Rocky Mountain Shootouts, the men's team surprised the field with an impressive second-place finish. Back in October, Metro State hosted their first-ever RMAC championship meet. Let's see how they fared. The race took place at Washington Park in downtown Denver. The women ran first and 13 teams from the conference competed, including the defending champs Adam State. Sophomore Zenia Flores running with the leaders early in the race. Right behind her is sophomore Danielle Kehoe and senior Taybrook Rudder keeping pace. Adam State won the event scoring 29 points. Kristen McGlynn took first place for the Grizzlies. Flores dashing to the line to finish in the eighth spot. The team finished in fifth place with 114 points. Kehoe crossed the line at 17th place. Rudder was three spots back in 20th. Carrie Allen finished in 26th. And Morgan Thomas finished in the 43rd spot. Now for the men's race, as 11 RMAC teams competed for the championship, Brandon Johnson and Nate Newland warming up before the race. Adam State is also the defending champ on the men's side. Johnson running around the 20th spot early on, Zach Marez and Anthony Luna not far behind. Ruban Shambon Moe from Adams State wins the race, giving the Grizzlies the RMAC championship. Johnson moves up the field to finish 14th place, helping the team finish in 4th. Luna finishes in the 19th spot. Iger Erickson was two spots back of Luna. Marez finishes soon after Erickson in 27th place. Newland crosses the line in 33rd. And Carl Arnold, along with Sean Limbaum, both finished 41st and 48th, respectively. Here are the final standings of that meet, brought to you by Hotel VQ, located just minutes from campus and the downtown area. Log on to www.hotelvq.com to make your reservation. Don't go anywhere.